the next video in the evolution topic. This video is going to be looking at two dot points, one from life on Earth, which is 8.4.3b. Gather first-hand or secondary information to make observations of a range of plant and animal fossils. And the second dot point is from the evolution of Australian biota topic, which is 8.5.2c. Perform a first-hand investigation, gather information of named Australian fossil samples, and use available evidence to identify similarities and differences between current and extinct Australian life forms. So the reason we've put these two dot points together is hopefully fairly obvious to you. We need to look at plant and animal fossils. So let's not just look at them in an Australian context and kill basically two birds with one stone. So as we looked at in the previous video, fossils are any remains, traces or imprints of an organism preserved over a long period of time. It is an extremely rare occurrence as it requires very specific conditions at the time of death of the organism. So there are four main conditions under which fossils may form. Firstly, we need a quick burial. So rapid covering of dead organisms or evidence such as footprints or coprolites, which are the fecal remains of animals, so dead poop. Secondly, we need to prevent decay. So we need conditions such as a lack of oxygen, a high acidity, very low temperatures and low moisture to prevent decay by bacteria and fungi. Then we need the organism to lay undisturbed, so completely covered by sediments, which helps pr to prevent scavenger organisms from breaking up and scattering the body parts. And lastly, we also need the presence of hard body parts. So for fossilization to occur, organisms need hard parts such as bone, exoskeleton, teeth or shells. So occasionally the conditions for fossil formation are perfect and impres impressions of soft body organisms can be preserved. For example, the jellyfish and worms that were found at Ediacara Hills in South Australia, and we have spoken about those in class as well. So what, uh, what we're going to do is have a look at a couple of different types of fossils, which can be summarized into these four categories. So mold or imprint fossils are a fossilized impression that is made into a rock of the original organism. So there is no longer um, any sort of, it's not a three dimensional fossil. It's basically as if you got a, um, say a 20 cent coin and you pushed it into some plasticine and you made an imprint of the 20 cent coin on the, the plasticine. The second type of fossils are cast fossils, which are formed when a mold is filled in. So this is what we were looking at in the video that was embedded into the video that we looked at for the last lesson, where an organism, the bones and everything break down and form a mold, then uh, different materials, different sediments come into the mold, harden and then form a cast. We have trace fossils. So these are fossilized nests, burrows, or footprints. So not actually any particular body part of an animal or a plant, but um, evidence that they were once there. And lastly, true form fossils are fossils of the actual animal or animal part. So as we see here, we have the amber that traps the insects on the surface of trees, and then that amber hardens. And we all know this from Jurassic Park, where they claim to have extracted dinosaur DNA from a mosquito that was trapped. Also, during the Ice Age, where there was a snap freeze, it is believed that full woolly mammoths were fossilized in the ice at that point. So what are some parts of organisms that can form fossils? So we'll be looking at a few of these in class. And from animals, obviously, as we said, hard parts are going to form fossils a lot easier than the soft parts. So most fossils that we will see will either be bones, teeth or shells. And from plants, leaves form imprints really quite nicely. The seeds also form um, molds or casts and obviously woody parts which become petrified. So in this investigation, you are going to move around the room to examine various fossil samples that are on display. And you're going to make some observations. So you're going to make both qualitative observations, which are those observations that use your five senses. So you're going to um, obviously look at the fossils. You're going to feel the fossils and write down things in terms of their color, their shape, uh, what they look like. Okay, obviously you're not going to be t uh, tasting them. You don't need to smell them or you won't be able to hear them because they're fossils, but we want you to be able to make observations that don't 
that describe the fossils that you're looking at. You also need to make quantitative observations. So these are observations that involve numbers as a result of some kind of measurement. So whether you measure the length, the width, um, the diameter of different types of fossils, depending on the two um, animal and the two plant fossils that you're going to look at. So yes, you have to look at at least four of the fossils that are available. So two plant, two animal, and then you'll be asked to compare them to organisms that still exist today, particularly Australian organisms that still exist today, and be able to make um, comparisons between the fossilised parts and those organisms that exist today. And that brings us to the end of this video, and thank you for watching.